welcome to Wildwood. Uh, my name is Holly. I'm one of the senior keepers here at the park, and I'm joined by Mark, who is our head of living collections. He's going to be talking to us about our birds of prey today. First of all, before we kick off, I want to thank everyone for fundraising and donating for us. We're really appreciative of it, um, and it's going a long way. We just can't wait to welcome you back through our doors. And I just want to give a special mention to all our regular viewers, especially Freddie at home. So hello, Freddie. Thank you for watching week on, uh, week out. Um, so Mark. Hello. Hello. Um, we're going to be talking about the birds of prey today, aren't we? And we are. we're going to be bringing some of the birds out to, to show people That's right. on camera. Uh, so we're at our flying lawn here today, uh, which is where we do our regular bird shows. Yep. Um, but they don't last all year, do they? So it's only a seasonal thing. That's right, yeah. We tend to do them throughout the main uh, peak of the summer. So late, late spring, usually through till September, October. And then a lot of these birds will, will start their molt process, okay. where they exchange their feathers for, for nice new ones. Um, and it's a nice opportunity for us to exercise the birds throughout the entire summer season before they go back into their large spacious aviaries. Uh, they can exercise nicely throughout the winter as well. But this is a great area for us to demonstrate natural behaviour, free flight with a range of different species that we keep here. And um, we've got every native species of owl here at okay. Wildwood. So we've got barn owl, little owl. Um, we've got tawny owl, which you might see today, um, long-eared owl, and of course the short-eared owl. Um, so we've got all species here at the park. Um, most of those, we don't fly the short-eared owl here. She came in as a, a wild injured bird, but um, she, she's living out a really happy life here. But the other birds are all uh, part of the free flight display. Okay. So you can come in, come and see them throughout the summer and uh, see them doing their thing. It's Perfect. really exciting. So that, mul oh, I think we're bringing a bird out. You'll have to hold off with me guys because uh, it's definitely up to the birds who's coming out and how they're acting so we may cut uh, back and forth. I don't know if we can turn the camera around to see Barnaby the bar now. No? Not really. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> so we're just bringing Barnaby out. Um, he is our bar now yeah, um, and he's probably one of our most enthusiastic flyers, right? <laughs> Beautiful species and of course a lot of people think this, uh, all owls are nocturnal, and of course they're not. This is what we class as a crepuscular species, so okay. the barn owl particularly comes out early in the morning. Um, you also see them early in the evening, but they'll hunt during midday as well. Yeah. Um, particularly this time of year, well, they'll, they'll have youngsters. They'll, well, a lot of them will still be brooding eggs, so they're quite late to hatch. Um, but, but pretty much now they'll be out looking for food all times of the day, trying to find um, food to, to rear their young. And voles, mice, shrews, ro small rodents make up the majority of the barn owl diet. Um, They're the a rodent. rodent Predominantly stuff. rodents, so they really are the um, friend of the farmer. Oh, okay. Like. So uh, a, a really amazing, amazing species. Barnaby over there, though, um, not doing so so well <laughs> at demonstrating his natural behaviour. He's enjoying his little hiding spot away. of sunshine up yeah, there. Yeah, and who could blame him? Who can blame him? Um, oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, a truly magnificent species and, and quite an iconic bird. There's, there's yeah, not definitely. really any species that looks like a barn owl. Um, really pale coloration um, that, that we love to see. And that's the, that's the sort of first, barn owls I suppose are the first sort of introduction people get to birds of prey, aren't they? Because they're just, that's what you remember is that silent sort of flyer of, of the barn owl. That's right, yeah, a completely silent flight. And of course, if you've ever been, been lucky enough to see a barn owl, and here in Kent, we're actually very lucky, particularly in this area where uh, where Wildwood is, is located, mm -hmm. we've got quite a healthy barn owl population. Oh, nice. But if you get to see them flying, they're not fast. They're not a quick bird. They don't have to outfly their prey. They don't have to outmaneuver it. They sneak up on it. They're really a stealth hunter. So okay. they, they fly in absolute silence. And that's true of a lot of our owls, the um, short-eared owl, um, long-eared owl, and um, tawny owl particularly, again, because they're not really fast, um, they have to rely on silent flight. And they do that because they've got really soft fringes down the leading edge of their feathers, right. um, which just bend with the air when they're, they're flapping their wings. Um, and they have no waterproofing oil as well, so they don't get that whirring sound. If you hear a pigeon taking off, it's yeah. really noisy, gets a lot more resistance in the air. Um, but the barn owl doesn't have that. so. The plus side is, gets lots of food, can sneak up on it, can yep. catch its prey. The downside to this is that if it's wet, rainy, um, really inclement weather, they can't go out hunting. Right, okay. So when you get a really wet summer period, um, the barn owl population doesn't do so well. Right, so you do see that reflection yeah. in, in their numbers. Absolutely, yeah. I suppose you'll also see that in, in terms of their, if they're reliant on rodents, as you get those rodent fluctuations in populations, these guys heavily affected by that as well? It, absolutely, yeah. I mean, it, it, they, they 
really do make up the, the vast majority of their plate. The short-tailed vole particularly is, is the, the barn owl's predominant food item. So where, where those po populations fluctuate a lot, it really does have an impact on these, on kestrels, and of course uh, other predatory species as well. Well, Barnaby did a bit of flying over there, but I'm not quite <laughs> sure that uh, <laughs> yeah, it was sure a huge benefit to, uh, to our, uh, our, our viewers. Um, but what we will do, I think, is bring out another bird that we okay. can actually get to see a little bit close up and, and talk about uh, her as well. As we said, guys, um, it's very much up to the birds if they want to fly or if they want to sit nicely <laughs> to be looked at. Uh, we're not going to make them. It's totally up to them, isn't it? I suppose Absolutely, that's the first, yeah. re uh, first rule of, of any sort of training, isn't it? It is, yeah. You have to give the animal provide choice and everything needs to be a positive experience. So if we, if we feel that at any point, any animal in a training program isn't benefiting from it, then we stop it. Um, so yeah, absolutely positive at, at all times. And I think the owls particularly do enjoy being out here. We, yeah. we usually coincide their feeding time with the time at which they're going to okay. be flying and, and, and around the handlers. So yeah, it becomes a very positive experience and, and the owls really do bond with the, the specific trainers. Yeah, well. I can imagine that that happens very <laughs> easily. Uh, both sides, human to owl and owl to, owl to person. Yeah. I think, do we have questions? Uh, guys, if you've got questions while we're talking, please chuck them down in our comments and we'll, I've got a team around me that will hopefully get them to me as quick as possible. Um, so I've got one from Sarah yep. who says, do owls only fly at night? Now you've kind of already answered that with the bar now. Yeah, um, not always, no, and it, it very much depends on pressures that they have at that, that particular time. Often during the breeding season or the rearing season particularly, you'll see owls out um, at different points during the day. The barn owl, as we mentioned, is a crepuscular species, so you're more likely to see it in light hours rather than right. night time. Tawny owls, um, predominantly uh, nocturnal, they'll, they'll okay. be out in, 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 at night time. Same with the long-eared owl, but the short-eared owl, again, is a diurnal species, so you're likely to see That's that daytime. in the daytime. Um, and the same with the little owl as well. Um, we, interesting one about the little owl is that within the UK populations, they're classed as a diurnal species. As soon as you get into the continent, they're classed as a nocturnal species. Wow. And their behaviour seemed to differ um, quite significantly as well. So it was, it was interesting. I had, I had a debate at uh, uh, a European owl meeting fairly recently. Oh, okay. And we were having this, this huge discussion. I'm, I'm adamant that they're diurnal. Everyone's adamant that they're nocturnal. And it turns out that the, the, the British population and parts in, in southern Italy are diurnal. And elsewhere in Europe, they're, they're nocturnal. So they're behaviourally very different. So is quite that... Interesting as a result of other species that are present, so there's quite a pressure possibly. to push them? It's quite possibly, and it's also down, I, I, I would suspect, a lot onto the abundance of, of food items, whereas on the continent, perhaps they'll be feeding on more nocturnal insects like moths, right. whereas in the UK, they'll be feeding a lot on beetles, grasshoppers, crickets, and other species. So um, I don't know the specific answer, but I would imagine it's to do with prey density and, and prey preference. Cool. That's Very fascinating, isn't it, that there's yeah. still questions that are just not... Yeah, not known. Not known at all. An animal that you know, I think, you take for granted that like an owl's an owl, but actually, yeah. there's still mysteries surrounding them. There is, <laughs> and it's it's a good question about the uh, whether all, all of them fly at night because you know, they're such a storybook species. Right. People think about owls; they they think about night time. Um, but of course, in the UK, the majority of our owl species actually, you, you're more likely to see um, three out of the five during the daytime. Amazing. I think we do have another bird coming. Oh, we do. Excellent. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is Gimli. Oh, look. <laughs> <laughs> Gimli and Christine. <laughs> Beautiful species. Hello. Look oh, at and those. he's talking for us. He's talking. He or she? She. It is a she. Sorry. I apologise. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Tornia. Um, one, of one of our, certainly one of our more common species of owl, although one that you're less li likely to see, just okay. because they like wooded areas, they like flying at night time, of course, um, so again, quite a secretive species. Um, you will see them during the daytime as well, um, again, during this, this time of year you'll see them. You'll often see, or, or more likely to see, birds after they've recently fledged, okay. um, and it's actually pro probably quite worth saying that um, because we take quite a few phone calls from people that have found a young owl on the floor yeah um, immediate instinctive reaction is to pick it up try and look after it and bring it somewhere but of course parents are usually quite close by so it's really important this time of year more than ever um, that these birds are left to their own devices and the parents will usually um, be very close by watching out for them 
Oh, what a <laughs> wonderful little bird. Yeah, beautiful. Look at those eyes. So that is, that's the nocturnal sort of classic look, isn't it, of those owls at night is those great big eyes. Yeah, really large eyes. Um, so the, orbit, orbit, uh, the, the muscles that control the eyes of the of owls is so large that unfortunately it has reduced the size of uh, space in the head so their really? brains are actually relatively small <laughs> um, compared to some species um, but their vision is absolutely fantastic right. as you can imagine and when th th their vision is it's their long distance vision actually up close their, their eyesight isn't so good so if, if once they've landed on something, they've got you can see if you can see on the camera they've got these um, long feathers, almost right, like yeah. hairs, just beneath, beneath the eyes and above and around the beak, and they use those as sensors. So once they've well, caught something, they can just feel where it is and, they go by and grab it. Yeah, yeah. So they've got amazing eyesight, but perhaps the most important sensor is the sen sense of hearing. The, right. The sen sound is so important to owls particularly flying silently at night time he's definitely listening to you she's definitely <laughs> listening to you sorry she I keep looks calling quite you bored talking <laughs> to listen to me <laughs> so they're not that ho that whole stereotype of wise old owls is actually not not true then <laughs> you're not going to hear it here for the first time yeah true. you're a little bit biased <laughs> But they're, they're, they're absolutely superb and they're perfectly adapted for the life they lead. And uh, the same, uh, hearing is, is so sensitive to these, which again is partly why they fly silently, just so because they're constantly listening out for, for their prey items. They've got one ear either side of their head like us, they've got one uh, slightly higher up than the other. Oh, really? Yep. And they've got one further in front than the other, and that gives them a bit of a 3D sound picture. Like so depth they can perception exactly for, that. for your hearing. Yeah, That's yeah amazing, absolutely. Isn't it? And it's, it's believed it's why they have this disc shaped face. It acts a bit like a satellite dish, which helps uh, sound waves just to penetrate around those feathers right. and into the ears. And it really does give them a good picture of, of where their prey is. But th the, these are an amazing bird. I think they're, they're certainly one of my favourite um, owl species. They're what, they're tawny? Yeah, they're amazing. <laughs> because they're, they're very adaptable, whereas a lot of owl species will, will um, be quite specific on their prey items, barn owls particularly, where, where they're feeding almost exclusively on on uh, voles and mice. Right. These will predate on birds as they're roosting, they'll predate on um, rodents as well, but they're, they're, they've got a very high prey drive and a very adaptable diet as well. So okay. Pretty unique bird. Wow, you just sat, sat looking pretty. <laughs> 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 yeah, sitting like a statue, they're good at that. So what's Ghibli like, Christine? She's, um, she, no, she's very sweet. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't trust her completely. <laughs> she has her days where she might be a little bit grumpy. But yeah, don't we all? Don't we um, all? No, she's a lovely bird. Um, she's brilliant in groups of people. Yeah, um, yeah. She's very calm. Um, she looks I think like she just likes coming out, really. Yeah, they, well, you were saying they seem to enjoy it, right? So well, making it positive. They do, and when when you've got a hander uh, like Christine, who's very, she's really confident with the birds, <laughs> and you've worked with them um, for a long time. They they have they build up a relationship, and, right. and so Gimli is very very comfortable sitting with Christine. If I was to hold Gimli, it'd probably be a different story. He'd probably right. be as comfortable with me. Um, <laughs> she's definitely Christine. watching those hands. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> I'm so an animated. We're Don't too worry, I'm the same. I've <laughs> had it all. <laughs> okay. Yep. Thank you very much, Christy. Yes, you're welcome. Bye, Gimli. So that was Bye, Gimli, Gimli, guys. She was she was our tawny owl. <laughs> Can't be too loud because I don't want to spook the bird. Um, so while we're just getting... Oh, we've got Rusty coming. So we've got another bird. So Rusty is a long-eared owl. Right. Um, this is again, another one of our nocturnal species. Look at those species. eyes. Beautiful bird. Daddy. This is probably the, the least seen of our native species in the UK. Um, simply because, well, they're, they're certainly not as abundant as the tawny owl. Okay. And again, they're, they're really, really secretive. They like very specific areas, specific um, areas of woodland. Um, very similar to the habitat that you can see around us. Old you know, native English woodland, lots of oak trees. Um, and you can see she goes, they, they change their shape quite dramatically based mm. on their movement. Mm. She's gone a little bit thin there because she's probably not used to me. Um, but she loves Paul. This is one of the birds that is very particular, isn't this she? This is very who specific. Who handles her yeah. and stuff? So yeah, we um, yeah, she's definitely got a relationship with you, Paul, hasn't she? Yeah, yeah, she's a bit, <laughs> bit odd. It's a bit annoying sometimes because everybody <laughs> can't fly over. Um, yeah, she's cracking when she do anything. But she, for me, it's a bit difficult. 
she has to be right, which is a bit a bit odd when it comes <laughs> to, you know. It's funny, I've just walked over there and she was being a tree then. And oh, really? As soon as she heard me, she changed her, her sign. She's all right, she's just, they're a bit <coughs> very aware of what's around them. And anything right. at the moment is, is a very spooky. Don't like the sunlight, obviously, because uh, we're not, a, <coughs> not really a daylight bird. But <coughs> yeah, she's all right. She's settled down a bit now. Yeah. I can't mm-hmm. get over those eyes. Those eyes. I hope li- hopefully the camera's picking <coughs> them up, but they're that. I'm not going to keep her about out for too long. No, no, just as long as so she's. Oh, yeah. Bid you good day. Take her back now, and then <coughs> she can then go and chill with you, you in the enclosure. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those eyes, Mark. They're just. They're amazing, piercing, aren't, they? aren't they? Yeah, they really are, and you, you'll see that on a on a number of our species. The eagle owls are off, often very similar. We're well, certainly the European and Asian eagle owls got these bright orange eyes as well. And yeah. It's believed that orange um, is a good colour for absorbing light, so okay. in dark conditions they, 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 they can see really well. But um, obviously the tall now has got jet black eyes, so um, and that hunts equally effectively at night time. Yeah. But yeah, that is a, a very striking bird, particularly with those uh, what we call ear tufts, those feathers on top of their head. Yeah, so but they're not actually attached to their ears, right? They're just they're <laughs> not. No, they're they're really for communication, and they're a good oh. indication of um, how the what, what kind of mood the bird is in. They'll often lay them quite flat, and you won't see them at all, or like that. Then just uh, pick, picking them up quite quite high on the head, and that's just saying she's very aware of what's right, going on. Yeah. And, and, uh, yeah. So Paul's just plunked her. Yeah, back she's now. plunked her back. She's happy now. <laughs> Um, so I'll quickly move on to Melvin's question. I do have more questions. I'll take those as well. Okay. So we got Christine. Do tawny owls climb trees? Do they climb, climb trees? trees? So uh, that's a good question because particularly this time of year when you've got youngsters that have recently fledged, they've got these really powerful talons that they use predominantly for gripping hold of, of prey. But if they fledge early, they're out on the floor and um, they want to get back to their nest site, mm-hmm. which is usually a hole, a, a cavity in a tree. Then they will. They they really? can grip hold of the bark and they can make their way That's back amazing. up. That's amazing. Yeah, which is, is great, and you'll see that with other owl species as well. So they've got, you'll see footage of them, or if you've been lucky enough to see it, um, youngsters will grip hold of bark, and particularly things like oak trees as well, where they've got that really rough bark yeah. and able to able to get a grip on it. They they are capable of doing that. That's but amazing. Yeah, it's it's usually just youngsters after they've recently fledged. Well, they're nice and light, I suppose, if they're exactly. adults, they hopefully can fly. So that, that's it, right? that's exactly it. Uh, Fiona would like to know, do owls have long legs? Well, some <laughs> some do, some don't. I think if you were to uh, if you were to look at a burrowing owl, look at the um, look at the proportions of a burrowing owl, which um, is a North American, North and Central American species, it spends a lot of time on the ground and it runs after its prey <laughs> rather than feeding on it. So uh, rather than flying after it. So yeah, it's got really long legs. Um, but a lot of raptors, do, birds of prey, um, owl species do have long legs because they'll often catch food on, on the air as well. So having long legs just enables them to snatch downwards um, whilst maintaining a bit of distance from the prey item and, and grabbing it. Um, fishing owls as well, for obvious reasons, yeah. have long <laughs> legs so they can grab down into the water um, without getting all of those weathers, uh, feathers soaking wet as well. So yeah, relatively long, some longer than others. I suppose it's just deceiving, isn't it? Because you just see like the feet sticking out That's underneath, but the legs are all The legs, yeah, go, go right up. And if you were to lift those feathers yeah, up, they'd yeah, look you'd quite see comical, that. I imagine. Yep. Laura wants to know how long do owls live? Um, again, g- a good question. It depends on the species. Some of the larger species, like the European eagle owl, um, will live for 40, 45 years. That's a long time. It is a very long time. Um, wow. Smaller birds, um, the barn, even a barn owl, would be about 25 years. Would be a, would be a good good life for one. Um, so they're quite a long lived species yeah. uh, or group of birds. Perhaps. Anita, what is their main diet? Now I'm not sure if Anita means here or okay. species specific. So we can talk about yeah, I mean, the, the birds that we have here are predominantly rodent feeders, with the exception of the, the little owl um, mm-hmm. that we keep here. So little owls will eat invertebrate prey a lot. They'll, they'll be hunting uh, in the UK, they'll be feeding on grasshoppers, crickets, um, a range of invertebrate prey, beetles as well. So often, you often see them in sheep fields, we get a lot of beetles oh, really? on the floor and, uh, and they'll feed on those, th- those as well. But they will take rodents, they'll take small snakes and lizards as well, so they're, they're quite a diverse adaptable species. But as a taxa, owls eat a wide range of prey items, and we've got a species like Pell's fishing owl, which feeds predominantly on aquatic life and, and fish, which is is really unusual as well. But I've got to admit, I'd never heard of a fishing owl. Yeah, <laughs> until a today. beautiful bird. Yeah, <laughs> amazing species. Take and it not in the UK there. No, 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 no <laughs> predominantly Asian species. Right. Yeah. Uh, Melvin would like to know which bird of prey flies the highest. So Rupal's griffin vulture is the the 
was classed as the, the highest flying um, bird in the world at oh one right. point, but um, that's been surpassed now by goose species, which we've <laughs> seen flying over the Himalayas. So wow. um, of, of the species that we uh, that are known for high flight, the Rupel's griffin vulture, um, African bird is, is certainly, in terms of, of birds, quail, raptors, um, right up there with, with some of the highest. But I mean, even within the UK, we've got some really high flying species. Peregrines will reach several thousand feet um, when, they're, when they're just hunting, wow. cruising around. So where is the Rupel's griffin vulture from? So it's an African species. Um, it's predominantly an African species. Right, it, it's entirely an African species, but there's a lot of pressure on African vultures, as you're probably aware. Um, Poaching, um, yeah. because poachers give um, give vultures give the game away. So if um, a large animal has been felled, been killed, um, vultures soar above it. So now there's this awful practice of poisoning vultures, uh, carcasses to kill vultures off, um, to protect poachers, which Some is that's awful. Incredible, isn't it? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Going to that extent. And of course you've got diclofenac, which yeah. is an anti-inflammatory, um, non-steroidal drug for arthritis but, but for cattle as well and across Asia that's decimated vulture population so there's a lot of um, pressure on vultures so the, the Rupal's vulture although they're African um, you can now start seeing them across the Sierra Nevada mountain range in Spain as well oh, wow. and they're mixing the, the we saw last year six Rupal's griffin vultures with Eurasian griffins as well all on this same mountain range which was amazing yeah. um, and there's two ways of looking at it you think well it's it's either sad that those pressures exactly, have, yeah. have, have pushed the birds out or how i like to look at it is that they're such an adaptable bird um that they will survive despite the pressures against them and if, yeah. if surviving means moving continent in this case and it's not a huge distance from spain um for, for a bird like that then 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 so be it yeah and at that, least they've shown they, they can do it I they guess. can do it and, and, and are yeah um, we've had which bird of prey flies the highest, which one flies the fastest? I think I know this one. Do you know that one, Holly? Yeah, I think, on, I think so. Let's test you out. What is it? Is it the peregrine? It is. Oh, yeah, thank God. it is the peregrine. <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's, it, it's, extreme, it's an extremely quick bird. Yeah. And the, the, there's all kinds of estimates of what the actual speed is. But I think, I think it's fair to say that within the 200 mile, probably slight, 200 mile an hour, slightly more um, bracket is an accurate depiction That's of how incredible it, isn't it it really is and you know they've got got things called nares in their in their nostrils which just help um, alleviate the pressure when they're, they're, they're diving <laughs> at that kind of speed and when we say they fly at that speed it's a vertical speed at that speed so it's reaching terminal velocity at around about 200 miles an hour wow in a straight line in in, in straight flight they, they certainly wouldn't be the fastest so that's going vertically downwards vertically and that's down. how they hunt so if you see them gliding around the air pigeon mm. flies underneath them right. and bang they, they just fold their wings in and you look at the shape of them they're yeah. just a perfect teardrop and it's it's, it's an amazing sight to behold it really yeah. is and you can see why they're so successful at, at what they do and yeah wonderful definitely species. they're an amazing bird aren't they yeah uh, i have a, a question from barry how far how far around can an owl move its head so how, how many it's it, it around about 270 degrees. So there's there's often these questions about but uh, an owl can see 360 degrees. Well, it it, it can, but it can't turn its head all oh, the way so in a it circle. Can't yeah, if it, it did that, around. its head would fall off. <laughs> so it's about 270 degrees each direction it can move all around. The reason they have to be able to do that is that their eyes are completely fixed. They can't move their eyes. At really? All. Yep. Can't move them at all. So their eyes are fixed in their head. Um, and so, whereas we can move our eyes from left to right, a lot, a lot of species can, um, most of our species can't do that. Is that because they're so big? Because they're so large wow. and um, so mu there's, there's so much um, muscle and everything taking up mm. all of the room in that head just to enable them to see as well as they can that they can't move them at all. That's amazing. Yep. Okay. I think we're just checking to see if any. So we've got we've got little Norma Jean, which is probably the only one that hasn't come out yet. I'm Norma sure. Jean, the little owl. Norma I've Jean. I've been told that's what her name is. You can see that that's not, that's not an approved name. No. Um, <laughs> um, so she's a little owl. I'm, yeah. I'm not sure if they're bringing her out, but I do think we had some footage of her. Okay. Um, so talk about. Norma Jean, have you worked with Norma Jean here? Or I have, something? yeah. She was she was a bird that was bred um, at the British Wildlife Centre um, okay. last year. And she came to us as, as a young bird and the team have just been working with her very closely and she's fantastic. Um, uh, little owls again, uh, predominantly diurnal, so really, really active species and 
brilliant in flight, loves being around the team, and she's, oh, really? a, she's quite a social bird, if you, if for those, those of our, our visitors that have been lucky enough to see her. Um, she's one that will come over, she's quite inquisitive, she wants, oh, to really? wants to know what's going on all the time, and the team work with her from a very young age, and um, this is an ideal spot for her, she knows the surroundings really well, mm. and she, she, she likes it here, and of course as she's moving around, there's, there's, she's kicking up insects all across the grass, so um, Norma Jean, as I now know her name to be, uh, <laughs> feeds herself out here, does her own thing. <laughs> um, are we bringing Norma Jean out? No, Norma Jean is having her breakfast, I think. Um, so I think that wraps us up unless you have um, any other questions. Um, if we sign off before you've got your question in, please just drop them in the comments anyway, uh, because our team, my team will get back, get me answering that for next week. Are we doing a live stream next week? Up in the air. We may do next Thursday, we may not. Um, but that uh, concludes our Birds of Prey live stream. So thank you very much to Mark for thank joining us much. and to all the birds that joined us here today. And thank you you guys for watching um, and we'll hope to see you guys soon. Thank you.